Jessen. What's up, man? Uh, not much. Just getting a little stressed out about uh, U.S.-Russian relations, and I thought maybe, just maybe, it'd be a good time to cover Karnov for the NES. Yeah, that'd benefit uh, U.S.-Russian relations. Yeah. Uh, you know, Vladimir the Putin's only... favorite game. Yeah, this is his favorite game. We haven't brought in Putin Rejoiced in a long time. I think tonight is the night. Right. Uh, it's not that it, it. Yeah, it's not that we were just. We just basically forgot about it. It's not that we were trying to shy away from some kind of politically motivated thing. Just no. Forgot I just about totally it, forgot. Uh, Putin rejoiced. But Putin will be rejoicing tonight. Yes. Yes, he will. And really, it's all thanks to Dude Ivan for his Patreon pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, of right. Karnoff. So, you know. I did, uh, before we get started, I did have a little game I wanted to play. Okay. It should be pretty short. It should be a pretty short game. Um, so, I earlier today, I was drinking a Monster Energy drink. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to look at the ingredients. Just out of curiosity. I've looked at them before, but maybe I should look at them again. I looked at them, could not pronounce probably half of them. So sure. I thought, let's play a little game. Uh, Justin, I want to play a game with you called, is it an ingredient for a Monster Energy drink, or is it some sort of ingredient for a cleaner? Okay. A cleaning solution. Right. I like it. Okay. I like it. Okay, first step. <clears throat> this ingredient is called... Hold on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> cyano, I'm not going to be able to pronounce any of these, by the way. Cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin. Uh, well, that's B12, so that would hopefully oh, be. I forgot I had your, a doctor on the on the show. Hopefully, be in your uh, Monster Energy. No, actually, that's Win. That's Windex. <laughs> <laughs> no, Windows. Windows uh, B12. They need really, that B12. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this 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 may not go as well as I had hoped. Since well, you, uh, that should be the only like vitamin that's in it, right? Okay, maybe. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. Let's go with triclosan. Triclosan. Ooh. Is that in a Monster fun. Energy drink, or is that in a cleaner? I'm going to say a cleaner. It is in a cleaner. That is in uh, right. most dishwashing detergents contain triclosan. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what about uh, putoxylothanol? Putoxylothanol. Mm, yeah, there we go. It sound, sounds like an alcohol. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to guess that it is a, in a cleaner. Yes, you are correct. It is in a cleaner. All right. Okay. Huh, you're pretty good at this game. I know, man. I know my uh, cleaners. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an industrial solvent type of guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about... Um, ooh, this will be a good one. This will be a good one. How about pyroxidine hydrochloride? Uh, well, that's that's a, that's definitely a uh, Monster Energy drink. Ah, it is. I thought I would get you... Is it you. pyridoxine? Is it pyridoxine? Yes. Okay. Hydrochloride. Yeah, okay. See, if you weren't a doctor, I swear, this would have been good. Because hydrochloride <laughs> is also, could also be in cleaner, right? Sure, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're just giving you the, the fancy names for B vitamins. Yeah. Okay, I got one more. All right. And uh, I almost didn't want to give it to you, because right. you're, you're a jerk. <laughs> I studied for this one. Yeah, you must have. Okay, actually, I'm going to give you two more. Okay. Okay, because this this is going to get interesting here. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them both both of them to you at the same time. Okay. Okay. And you're going to have to. Wait, are out. they both in one or the other? Yes, they're in one okay. or the other. All right. Okay. The first one is sodium hydroxide. Mm. Mm. And the second one, hold on, you're going to have to do them both at the same time. The second one is sodium chloride. Which one's in which? 
sodium chloride and sodium hydroxide? Well, intuitively, I would say the sodium chloride would be in the monster drink, but I feel like it's a it's a trick question. Why would you think it'd be in the monster energy drink? Well, it's just so sodium chloride is just salt. Uh huh. But it's also, you know, it's, it's up to you. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to go cleaner. Uh, sorry. That was actually, it was, it was in, it's in Monster Energy Drink. Uh, <laughs> to me off. All right. So sodium hydroxide is in the cleaner. All right. That, okay. that was it. I just, right. I thought that'd be a fun little game to play. All right. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. And, and everybody gets to learn a little bit so right. here's what i figured out because I, I i looked into this too and that's why i decided to play the game turns out all these so a lot of these scary named things that are in these monster energy drinks that i was afraid of when i looked at the label most of them are just fancy names for vitamins yeah they're either fancy names for vitamins or they're a preservative so but now if we lived in california it would probably have a label on it that <laughs> something's gonna kill you in it yeah, listen to everybody. Listen to our latest Patreon episode, and you'll hear us rant about how coffee and caffeine, to, or right, coffee with offend, a cancer label. Not to offend anybody from California, but yeah, yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. All right, let's anyway. talk about Karnoff. All right, I Is was uh, before the podcast started. You asked me what I was doing. I was putting my bag bomb on. Oh, okay. So bag bomb here it is from here. Uh huh. Bag bond. Listeners can't hear it. It's in a green tin can. It's like a really old stuff that you could buy at the co-op. I think they actually sell it at Walmart now. I think I saw it the other day. But um, it's it's a balm that, you, that farmers use on cow teats <laughs> when they get dried and cracked. But when I worked at the co-op, I learned about this stuff being like the best stuff for your dry, cracked hands. Oh. And, you know, I'm in the hospital all the time, dry, washing my hands and drying them all constantly. So my hands, especially in the winter, it's just dry and cracked constantly. I need some of that because my hands get that way too. Because I'm dealing with a lot of, like, moist soil at work. Yeah, And so it, yeah. it sucks all the moisture out of my hands. If you can't get to a, like I said, I think they have it at Walmart. I purchased mine at the co-op just for loyalty's sake, I guess. But uh, same do you think price. They ha- do you think they have it at Tractor Supply? Because that's what we've Probably. got here in our city. I get. I guarantee you they do. And it's it's like the best stuff. I mean, your hands look greasy after you do it, so I only use it like night. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's like the best stuff. I don't know if I can handle that hands. though. I hate the way lotion makes my hands feel slimy. And stuff. Yeah, I see. I don't either, but this stuff, but it gets to the point where mine cracks so much, like my hands, like actually start to hurt. Mm, I uh, gotcha. But um, anyway, another little tidbit about it: it's kind of manly. See, you know, it's kind of a, you know, this is like a farmer thing, right? Uh-huh. And it stinks. There is no frou frou lotion uh, smell okay. to it. All right, it's got some stink. What about, uh, what about, does it work for chap lips? <laughs> I'm sure it would. <laughs> but you got to put it on the cow first. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, uh, um, oh. yeah, that's another thing. It smells, speaking of industrial solvents, it's, it smells like some kind of, like, chemical of some kind. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about Karnoff anyway, before about I get Karnoff. Too, Karnoff. too unfamily friendly. All right. In, uh, we don't have industrial solvents in this game, but we got a guy that looks like he belongs in a circus. That's right. A okay. Russian strongman. Um, Mr. Karnoff himself. Would you like some history? I would love some history. All right. So Karnoff brought to us by... None other than Data East, who created the Karnoff arcade game and then brought it uh, to several different ports, including the NES, of course, uh, and the Famicom, as well as uh, personal computer. Um, now, uh, uh, Karnoff is kind of this 
you know, strong man. And if you look at the uh, differences in the posters, they're they're actually quite funny. Uh, if you look at like the difference between the box art on um, the NES, which looks pretty cool, yeah. But then like the Famicom version doesn't look that cool. And then if you get to the arcade game flyer, and if you haven't seen it, I suggest you look it up because it's ridiculous looking. Like, Karnoff looks like he has, like, a tiny little head on, like, this giant body. It's just, it's just weird. But the, but the title character's name is Jinborov Karnofsky, uh, or Karnoff for short. And he is, uh, portrayed as a man being from an unspecified part of the Soviet Union's Central Asian Republics. That's what it says on the, uh, game player. Anyway, yeah, I just pulled up the uh, flyer, and he yeah. actually he reminds me of a Ninja Turtle. It looks like his head's coming out of like his <laughs> shell or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like he has no neck. There's no neck whatsoever, and his head's way too small for his body. And also, Karnoff has way more abs in all of his photos on the like the flyer and the box mm-hmm. art. He's way more abs than he actually has because in the game he's just got a big old kick. And, yeah, and way more abs than the typical circus strongman has. Right. I mean, circus strongman kind of they got the big, big uh, arms, but then they're just like just got a beer gut. Yeah. They just like lift heavy things. They don't ever do cardio. Right. You know? But anyway, um, he's he's been in actually several different other games as well, and, and not just this game. And he was in Bad New Bad Dudes versus Nin. Dragon Ninja. Uh, he was the first level's boss, and then he comes back later in the game. Uh, he's also the last opponent in Fighter's History, and uh, he was a guard boss in the game. Well, no. In the game Galco, um, there is a guard boss that looks just like Karnoff. Um, and his name is Big Karnak. I think he was, now, uh, he's kind of like the Data East mascot, right? Yeah, he kind of. I think he is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, on, side note on the bad dudes, we covered that game. That also used to be the logo for our show. And mm-hmm. I think I'm going to call out here because uh, we had a listener a long time ago that told us that we should have used the bad dudes game as our final episode because that was our logo. We did not right. do that, and I don't think that person listens anymore. And I think that's I think that's probably why. I think we have maybe he him. thought that was a, that was our final episode. Oh, we did bad. That dudes. could be it. Yeah. He's like, oh well, they did bad dudes. I guess they're done. I guess they're done. That was only yeah. like a hundred episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that was a short-lived podcast. Anyway, uh, Karnoff was uh, actually well received. He sold. Uh, over 250,000 copies by November of 1989, and it came out uh, uh, in December of 1987. So, just a little under two years, it already sold 250,000 copies. Uh, there is some notable differences between the uh, not only the uh, arcade and NES version, but actually the Famicom and NES version. In the NES version, you have unlimited continues. In the Famicom version, you do not. Nice. And, yeah. And in uh, the arcade game, you get uh, you die after just one hit. Um, where the NES game, you die after two hits. So, a little bit more ridiculous in how hard it is. And the final boss in the arcade is a, a wizard and not a three-headed dragon. Hmm. Which you by in the NES version. So that's really about it for the history. Uh, did you go to like a a Soviet Union Central Asian Republic to get this game, or did you just go to your computer and buy it online or something? Uh, no, actually, this game uh, I was traveling in Europe mm-hmm. and uh, you know just hitting all the hot spots like uh, Yugoslavia and. Uh, <laughs> You know, Slovenia, yeah, Slovenia, Kazakhstan, all the gr- all the hot spots in Europe, you know. Right. And uh, I just stumbled into a retro game shop there, and lo and behold, 
Karnov was every game on the shelf was Karnov. If you can Karnov that. is big over there. Yeah. They had the arcade version, they had the NES version, they had the Famicom version. I said, I guess I got to get Karnov. And <laughs> the guy said, well, he didn't really understand why I said that, but he, just <laughs> yeah. point, he pointed and grunted, so I got it. Right. Now, uh, it's interesting. Now, like, because we, we kind of broached this subject in the last episode about wampum and, you know, uh, characterization of certain nationalities. Mm-hmm. I wonder what Russia thinks of the circus strongman. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Because, I mean, I gotta be proud of that. I mean, hey, the strongest guy in the circus is always Russia, right? That's true. Wouldn't you want to be? I mean, you've got, you not only do you have, uh, uh, Ah, oh, shoot. I can't think of his name now. Um, Ivan Drago. Ivan Drago, <laughs> yeah. right? And now you also represent the strongest person in the circus. Yeah. I mean, if you're Russian, you'd probably be pretty proud of that. I would say. But then again, if I was a Native American, I'd be proud of Wampum. That's just me. Well, that's true. So. Right. Moving on. Uh, no, right. the real story... No, should I just should I ever tell the real story anymore? Because I can come up with these awesome stories instead. You can tell the real story. Okay, the real story is I bought it from a local game shop about two or three years ago. Yeah, boring. Yeah, I'm not going to tell unless I have a good real story. From here on out, people, you're going to get the best of the best fake stories I can come up with. Hmm, I like it. Yeah. I'm getting tired of telling the real story because the real story I've realized is a little too boring. Yeah. I have a few games that I have really good stories for, uh, but they're few and far between. Right. Neighbor kid. Yeah, and they're all either neighbor kid, that guy from UT that I bought like 200 games from, or just the local game shops around here. We need to fit. We need to locate neighbor kid. I know he's like in a different state now, but. Yeah, I, I talked to him a couple years ago on Facebook. So yeah. he does still exist. Does he still got that long, stringy hair? I don't know. He had long hair at one point. Yeah. Man. Is calling it stringy offensive? Not if that's what you're going for. <laughs> yeah, okay. He might be listening. That's what I'm asking. He used to have the, uh, I feel like he used to have like flippy do hair, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like where it flips up in the front. I think that's yeah. the hair I remember him having. Seems like I saw a picture or something. He had long, long hair. Maybe. And a beard, probably, right? Probably. Okay. All right. You want to talk about the Carnot. game? Carnot. Let's talk about the game. All right. I'm going to start us off with the manual. How about that? All right. So the manual pretty cool it's basically just uses the box art for the Mm -hmm. art which Which, that's standard the NES version again has the best box art uh yes it does for sure and actually I've not played the other version but it sounds like the NES version is the best game too right uh alright Data East brings you arcade realism at your home Karnov the fire breathing Russian is seeking the lost treasure of Babylon he runs, swims, jumps, climbs, and flies through nine levels of gameplay. Countless bizarre enemies of various sizes and strengths are out to prevent Karnov from finding the treasure. Yes, bizarre enemies is correct. That is it. Uh, okay, there's controls, how to play, which we're going to get into in the games discussion. Uh, I'm just looking for anything interesting in the manual. Just don't clean with benzene. Yeah. I'm not really seeing anything really good in the manual. It's, it's your no, basic fare. Tells you just how to gonna play. go over. Yeah, Tells you what the things are. Now, they, they do say this like a little flying, what I thought was like a gargoyle-like character in the game. It's, it's real name is Chicken Bone. Oh, yes. He lies, he lies in wait for Karnov at the top of a tree. Right. Then swoops down chick- upon him suddenly. It's just not a very intimidating sounding name. That's old chicken bone. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it's like he a looks... nickname your dad would have for somebody. <laughs> yeah, it does actually. That does, uh, he may have called <laughs> somebody a... Chicken Bone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that may have been his nickname for you, actually. Maybe. Back. Maybe. There's old Chicken Bone. <laughs> yeah. It, it would be somebody who was skinny, had like skinny arms right. or something, which could be right. Me, so. Right. So. Probably you been, hey, you been hanging out with old Chicken Bone again? <laughs> yeah. I think he cut. For a, he, for a while, he called me Goob. So yeah. I could. I, here's how the story would go: If I went down to Justin's house, I walk back in the door. Dad would say, "Hey, Goob, you been hanging out with old Chicken Bone?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. So there Great. you go. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. So let's just talk about the game in general. I am a bit torn on this game. I am too. You know, there was like, there's things that I really like about it, and then I, you know, I like the overall design of the game. Like, I like the enemies, I like the levels, but there's certain parts that I don't like, and that's I don't like the way he moves. It's slow, sluggish feeling to me. Yep. Uh, it's not that the controls are necessarily bad. The controls are really fine. It's just, you know, when he drops down, like, off the ladder, he's just, it takes forever. Or when he jumps, he's a very slow jump. So that that, that kind of turns me off a little bit. For a big old fat guy, he falls <laughs> like a feather. It's so <laughs> <Yeah>. weird. <laughs> uh, and I was looking at the sprite, like, when he does fall, and I couldn't tell, but it was like, I was like, is he like holding something over his head? It like looks, I couldn't tell if it was like changing to like make it just, look like he. I think he's just flexing. He's like, Hur. yeah, that's probably true. But I was like, <laughs> is there something like purpose? Like, is there something I'm missing here that's purposely slowing him down? Mm, like uh, a parachute or something? Yeah, like, yeah. He no, took his shirt that he never wears <laughs> and throws them above his head. He doesn't, he doesn't own a shirt. What are you talking about? That's true. The, okay, so That's Karnov is... I think Karnov is Vladimir Putin. Like, have you seen well, Vlad on the horse with, with his shirt off? Man, he's kind of like Karnov the most famous like. picture ever. Yeah, he's kind of Karnov-like. You know, everybody made fun of that, but, every, but I mean, joke's on, joke's on them. I mean, he looks great. Yeah. Shirt off on a horse. I mean, uh, <laughs> we I, wasn't, I wasn't making fun of it. I was just a little jealous. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, no. other thing's funny, okay, Putin tangent. The other thing's funny is when they have, like, a hockey game and he just, like, joins a hockey game and and they'll score, like, a goal. And I mean, come on. You think Putin's really scoring goals against these? No. They're letting him win so they don't die. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like when uh, Kim, uh, Kim Jong... I don't know if Kim Jong Un does this, but his dad did this. It's like they go out and play 18 holes of golf, and they come back, and it's like everybody that was with him be like, "Yeah, you got a hole in one time, every hole, every hole, hole in one." He's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, and everybody said that. It's like, okay, yeah, it has to be true then, right? Right. Now, I think um, even the bird. Have you seen the that little video or GIF of the bird saluting Putin? <laughs> no. Okay, even the birds know that Putin is the man. You have to look it up. Right. It's like bird uh, salute. Just look it up. Bird salutes Putin. Everybody needs to look it up. But the, he's walking yeah. down the road, and it looks like he waves at the bird. I think he's just talking and using his hands. But it looks like yeah. he waves at the bird, and then the bird turns and like salutes him as he walks by. <laughs> like they're walking <laughs> in opposite directions. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, man, that's hilarious. If I think about it, I'll send it to you. Yeah, or post it in the, in the Facebook. Uh, no, all right, Karnov. So here's my thoughts. It everybody, it's a side scrolling, mm-hmm. level by level game. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and you have a bunch of different items you can use. Tons of items actually. Yeah. Uh, and along with those items, you've also got um, fireballs that can be upgraded. So he spits fireballs out of his mouth. Starts with one, and then you can upgrade to two and three. So you can have like a spread shot, kind of like in Contra eventually Mm -hmm. okay all that's fun it is fun and i like there's a huge variety to the items you can get and use um but i'm with you the controls are a little floaty 
Not that they're necessarily bad, with one exception. There's a huge major flaw in this game for me that makes me not even want to play it almost. And that is the way you select your items when you're playing this game. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the way the controls work is one button shoots, one button jumps, and one the select button will uh, use your special weapon, and the start button pauses. Okay, well, you have about ten, you could potentially have up to like nine or ten different items to use mm-hmm. at one time. How do you select those items? By pressing left or right. Not holding yeah. a button and pressing left or right, not pressing select, not anything else. Just pressing left or right. So that means that when you move Karnov, you change weapons. Yeah. And in order to change weapons, you have to move Karnov. So either you have to do these little stutter step moves with Karnov to change weapons, or you have to kind of naturally change weapons. But it killed me so many times because I thought I was ready to use a weapon, and then I'd have to dodge an attack. And then when I dodged the attack, I picked a, I picked the ladder or something, and then... Accidentally used the ladder, and then I'm like, oh crap, now I'm dead. Yeah, I, I agree. That that was uh, wonky. You know, it kind of, it's just, yeah. I mean, I hate to say that it almost ruined the game for me, but it really does almost ruin the game for me. Because yeah, I just, and it makes me not want to use all these awesome items. And they're 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 awesome items, but it's like it almost becomes the goal of the game is to collect these items because the whole level is just loaded with all these items. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Constantly. Like in, in, um, I mean, you really pretty much need them. And then the ladder, you pretty much have to have to like get more items. It's like the whole game is essentially based on the items, but then you also have these uh, pretty elaborate bad guys throughout the, the stages. It's not just like I mean, every bad guy in the stage almost looks like a freaking boss, you know? That's true. Uh, so. the, that is one thing, though. The bad guys are pretty varied. I mean, I, I think that's one mm-hmm. of the definite perks of the game. There's a ton of different enemy types, and they all kind of do different things. It's not like it's not like some games where you have they just change the color of the guy, and he still does the same thing every level, you know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, no, no. So, it's definitely a well kind of presented game, but there's some design flaws. Yeah. I guess is kind of the way I yeah. look at it. Like But anyway. Yeah, I just it, it just bu- it just really bugged me that the items were all so interesting and and it just it was a struggle to use them and that really bothered me. Yeah. Uh, let's go through the items a little bit here. Uh, so right. you, can get, you can get boots, which makes you jump higher. Mm-hmm. You can get a bomb, which you can attack enemies and blow up walls. Right. Which I never really used it to blow up enemies because it's got a really short fuse and you just kind of drop it on the ground in front of you. You can't throw it. Mm-hmm. So I found it really hard to attack enemies. But you can blow up some, some walls with it. and So I thought that was pretty neat. There's a ladder, which is random, but there's you can get a ladder and just put it on the ground and climb it. Right. Which, like you said, and the ladder's they're... good. The ladder's good for getting items, but the ladder is also good for bosses. I found because you can climb the ladder and shoot on off of it, so you can climb right. up and down, yeah. up and down the ladder and shoot the bosses by climbing up and down the ladder. I, that's one of the strategies I like to use. Did you know that you can pick the ladder back up? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Discovered that. That's pretty awesome. That took me. A you long don't time. lose it when you use it. Yeah, not the ladder, because you can you can climb the ladder, and then when you get back down to the bottom, you can pick it back up and t- take it with you. Right. So I like that. I don't know where he puts the ladder when he's carrying it around. <laughs> it's a fold. It's a fold up ladder. Oh, okay. He just folds it up and puts it in his pocket. Gotcha. Right. Uh, and then uh, you got the boomerang. Matthew's favorite. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Except for this one, come actually does come back and does not break. Right. Uh, the clapper, which I don't think I ever got the clapper, but it says it destroys all the enemies on the screen at one time. Yeah. Except for bosses. No. Did you get the clapper? I didn't know. Uh, glasses, which allow you to see and retrieve hidden options. I didn't get that one either. Mm-hmm. Uh, the swimming mask. Did you get that one? That one allows you to swim faster underwater. I did no. get that one. It's on, you can only get it on stage five, I think. 
That's where I got it. Uh, there's wings, which must be some pretty strong wings to carry this guy around. That's true. That's true. But you can get wings and fly for a little bit, but you can only do it in certain spots. Uh, right. And then one of my favorites is the shield. You can get the shield, and basically it means you can take more hits because he blocks the attacks with the shield. And That's then it. don't forget about all the K's you got to collect. Oh, yeah. Lots of K's. K's, K's everywhere. Which I, I guess. K's are almost like the coins. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Like these are rings or, you know, other names. Basically, you collect 50 and you get an extra life. Is which it a 50? life is really. A, yeah. Yeah. Which a life is essentially just you get hit again. Yeah, I think lives in this game are not really... With the infinite continues, I didn't really find the lives to be all that useful. Right. Because the stages aren't terribly long. Um, mm-hmm. And the checkpoint system is kind of weird anyways. Uh, so, uh, to me, just having the infinite continues, because the way the continues work is you die, you get to start on the stage that you're on. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, in Famicom version, it might be. I mean, if Famicom version, no infinite continues, then. Yeah, I don't don't want to play the Famicom version. That sounds terrible. Karnov lives matter. (laughs) Uh, yeah. (laughs) Hey, so Karnov, he's like obsessed with these fireballs, right? Because not only does he spit them out, but if he gets hit and he's hurt, what, what item do you think also makes him feel better? Fireball. Fireball. Yeah. Right. He's a fireball kind of guy. He just, you know, sticks a fireball in the wound and just cauterizes it. Just, oh, yeah. It's good to go. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So did you, how far did you make it in this game? I only got it through, through the third level. I actually thought the game was pretty tough. Really? I thought it was pretty reasonable. I actually beat it. Uh I thought it was not really that tough. It's with the infinite continues and the levels being a little bit shorter, the only thing that bu- messed me up were the controls being so floaty. It's not what I'm used to. Right. And uh, the item selection thing really frustrated me. But I basically, I just tried not to use the items as much. I tried to use the items as little as possible. Well, let me ask you better. this. And this is going to be a spoiler, but it's, we're not spoiling much. What did you think of the end? Uh, well, there's not really much to it. To it. Right. It says, congratulations, <laughs> it says, the end. Yeah, it just says, congratulations. The, in, in, in the end plain boss text. Is, yeah, yeah, just a plain text. The end boss is really like the easiest boss of the game, too. Yeah. It's just, a, it's just had three to... holes that a head comes out of. All you got to do is dodge the head and shoot it. And in the arcade, so the arcade, you had a wizard to fight, but it was the same boss. Like, it was basically, they just changed the sprite from a wizard to a dragon. Yeah. Um, Which is weird. I wonder what they thought. Like, uh, as Americans, they don't like wizards. Yeah, they do not like wizards in America, for sure. So, no, but I thought the, that. like, in the game, the difficulty, like, you said you made it to level three. I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me look at the manual. Let me think what level that is. But the difficulty is, it's all over the place for me. Mm-hmm. Hello. I don't remember what... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just ran a call center here as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, but that's uh, probably Nick. He's calling to leave his voicemail. Oh, Not yeah. Calling. I wonder what he's going to think about this game. Yeah, I don't know. So stage three is the dinosaur level. It's like the... Uh, yeah, okay. Like yeah. The prehistoric looking uh, Yeah, area. stage three was one of the more difficult ones. Like what I was trying to say is, I, I, it's like another game we play, but I can't think of the name of it right now. But this game, the levels are not... It, it's not a gradual difficulty curve. It kind of mm-hmm. It's kind of like a wave. It, go, it goes up and down. Some of them right, are harder yeah. than others. It's, it was, it was, it's yeah. kind of strange. Uh, but yeah. yeah, the final boss, he's a piece of cake. But some of the bosses are pretty hard. And the final boss is really easy. So, I don't know. Uh, it's got a good... It's just... It's got a decent amount of challenge. But some people probably think it's way too easy. I would think yeah. if I if I can beat it, then it's probably way too easy for a lot of people. You got Merman. The first one is a Merman. Apparently, it's a Merman. Chicken Bone. The 
<laughs> I don't think chicken bone is the same as the merman, right? Oh, I don't know. I'm just assuming everybody's chicken bone. Maybe. <laughs> chicken bone one, chicken bone two. Right. It's just, uh... No, nah, I think... I don't know. Is that a... I don't know if that's a merman or not. I'm looking at the picture. But, uh, maybe, maybe a merman. Yeah, I don't know. What about so, the graphics? Anyway. What about the graphics in this game? What do you think about it? Uh, well, okay. So, first of all, Karnoff has hepatitis. <laughs> He's like yellow, or jaundiced, which, perhaps. Right, he's, he's jaundiced, which is funny because, so, if you look at the arcade version, it kind of spoils you because the arcade version looks way better. Yeah. I think than the NES version. It does look way better. Um, but I mean, I, I actually kind of like the graphics. The sprites were all very detailed, very good. I love the backgrounds. Uh, they were almost some of the backgrounds are almost set up kind of 3D and the, the different uh, distances and the and the rocks and things. Yeah. So I, I was a big fan of the graphics. I thought they were very decent. Uh, I didn't think they they didn't really blow me away. Uh, Karnov mm-hmm. looks really good. His sprites really good. The enemies are varied, which I can appreciate that, but they are. There's not a lot of colors to them. Like they're they kind of yeah. all the enemies are one color. I mean they're not all the same color, but each enemy is only gets only one color basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though they look somewhat different, so it makes them kind of look blurry right. to me. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of definition to them. Right. And then the levels are somewhat varied, but again, there's not a lot of color in the levels. I felt like like there's a lot of grays, <clears> a lot of browns. Um, that sort of thing, and there's a, there's some instances that I found where the graphics caused me problems playing the game, like where the ground would be blue, and then right next to it would be water, and you and they are almost the same color, and you just walk off the ground and fall off into the water, right? Because it looked yeah. like more ground, kind of. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't know. I thought the graphics were just they were very much decent, not terrible, but they're. And then the next thing that I know you're going to ask about yes, is my least favorite part of the game. You didn't like that one song that played over and over and over again? The one song. <laughs> and it was like the worst song that they could have found. It was so bad. Like, it was annoying. It kept having that eh, 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 like <laughs> part to it. And it was just like, oh, God, this song is terrible. It's like circus uh, music. You know? I don't. I think I would have rather preferred an eight bit version of than the song that they played because it was it's so probably, bad. It's probably copyright. Probably. Yeah. Uh, see, the song. I don't feel like the song is really that bad, but boy, is it overused. I mean, mm-hmm. so here's what I would say to the listeners out there. Uh, do you like the Carnival theme song? I sure do hope you do, because you're going to hear it <laughs> on every level over and over again. All the time. <laughs> but eh, it's it's not a terrible song. It's just, ah, it just feels kind of lazy that they just gave him a theme song and used it the whole time. And what is Karnoff? Is he like, I mean, is he a circus guy? Is he a god? I mean, he gets he comes down on lightning. Yeah. At the beginning of every level, I, I think he's a god <laughs> who is that he comes down and instead of ruling over the people, he just joins the circus. He, he, he earns some extra scratch. Yeah. Uh, being in the circus. Right, right. It'd be like if uh, Hercules. Is Hercules the one that's like the son of Thor or something? I think Hercules is the son of Zeus. Oh. I don't right. know. I just, I just I think I just mixed up Greek and Norse mythology. Yeah. I just I just combined them. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Here. Anyways, yeah. if uh, Hercules, if Zeus sent Hercules down to like uh, save people and stuff, and Hercules instead mm-hmm. said, "You know what? I'm just going to go over here and join the strongman competition. I'm just going to lift heavy objects." Yeah, that, yeah. that's what he. That's what Karnov is. There's not a there's not a barn on Bailey Circus anymore, is there? 
I don't think like, so. Didn't they, didn't they close? I think they closed. I think it was recent, like in the last yeah. couple of years. It's kind of sad. It's kind of like how the Toys R Us closing. Yeah. It's basically the end of all of our eras. Right. All of our childhoods. Our childhood is over. You know no what? It's, it's probably, they're looking at all us 30-something-year-olds and saying, God, these guys are not growing up. We got to close this. Stuff. We got to close down Toys R Us. We got to close down all this stuff they love. Right. Right. Because they are just acting like a bunch of kids. Right. And right. I blame the song, too. I don't want to grow up, you know, I'm a Toys R Us kid. Yeah. I mean, they, they put it in our heads. That's right. It's really Toys R Us's own doing. You know what's, what's weird is when Toys R Us was, like, closing, the guy who, like, was, like, the founder just died. Yeah, I know. That is weird, isn't it? It, like, killed him or something. I don't know. So, I don't know. Weird. Well, what about, uh, you want to just discuss whether it's worth it? I think it's time. Whether it's worth it? Yeah. So, hold on. I didn't actually look up how much it's worth. I don't know what you paid for it. Uh, I don't remember what I paid for it. I think it was uh, uh, three rubles. What is the what is the currency right now? So it looks like average about eight bucks. Eight bucks. Uh, I actually I think it is worth it because I think it's I think yeah. you can get enough enjoyment out of it for eight bucks. I've kind of been down on it a little bit, uh, but I would I, I would also say it's worth eight dollars um you know i wouldn't go much higher than yeah that's kind of the crest of it for me right uh eight to ten dollars if it gets much over about ten dollars i would say it's not worth it anymore but at that price it's not bad it's pretty good actually yeah i mean it's it's an enjoyable game it's just it it will frustrate you i will tell you that it will frustrate you that'll do pig that'll do that'll do all right you got any retrofitted trophies? I'm guessing we both have one that's the exact same thing. Oh, we do? On the retrofitted trophies. I had some in my... Hold on. <laughs> well, I'll... I had some. I'm going to beat you to one of them. Uh, okay. If you beat this game in under 20 minutes, you get the Vladimir Putin would be impressed. Or no, Putin rejoices. That's the truth. Yes. Putin's Putin rejoices. I didn't have that one. Oh. Okay. Um, ah, shoot. Why am I blanking? I had them wrote down and I can't find the paper that I had them wrote down on. So now yeah. I'm just blanking. Well, that's what happens when you don't write things down. I said I had I said I said had them on a piece of paper and I can't find them. Oh, okay. All right. You want me to wait on you or you want me to just go ahead? Go, just go ahead. I think of them up. Yeah. Okay, my next one's called uh, These Boots Were Made for Jumping, and that is get the boots that make you jump double high. Hmm. Good. You know, it's kind of like These Boots Were Made for Walking, the song. Yeah. Uh, and I thought of another one while we were recording uh, called Matthew Would Be Impressed, and that is get the boomerang, throw it, and catch it without it breaking. Yeah. Matthew would be impressed. <laughs> all right. I think that's all I, I can't got. Think of it. Okay, that's good. Moving yeah. on. Moving on. Uh, all right. Are we going to rate it? Yeah, I don't know. Good question. Circus Act? We could. Yeah. Okay, Circus Act. All right, Circus Act. All right, I'm going to go. One. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go with the uh, Lion Tamer. Okay. Because it's pretty fun to watch the Lion Tamer. It can be a lot of fun, depending on what all they do. But it can also be very frustrating if the lion is not feeling it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, man. If he's if he don't want to do any tricks, or like if he's get, if he's feisty, or if he's, just <laughs> yeah. bo- if he's boring and he's just laying there, like he's just lazy yeah. that day. Yeah. Uh, it's that's the funniest. That's the funniest part of 
lion taming is like it's not the fact that the lion could kill the guy if he wanted to it's just like the lion just screws with him it's yeah. like <laughs> uh, oh you want me to sit on that stool i'm gonna sit on this one over here actually <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like you, you can't tame a lion you know right right yeah so that's hey what I, that's oh what that stick that, that that whip that thing you're trying to whip me with let me see that he like tries to grab it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you want me to go what you want me to go like grab that with my mouth how about I just grab your leg instead <laughs> yeah. oh man a good modeling that's not what you want for your circus no and that's how I felt when playing Karnov and I accidentally picked the wrong item and I get killed I feel like I've been mauled by a, a lion who does not want to do what you want to do wow all right, um, I'm going to go with trapeze. In that trapeze, it looks cool, um, and it's really neat. And you got to think that's that's uh, that's that's a pretty impressive. But at the same time, kind of get bored with it pretty quick. Just cause, yeah, because they're just they're swinging around, yeah. Yeah. And then they keep wanting you to clap for them. They're so pompous. He's <laughs> pompous. Uh, who, who do these trapeze people think they are? They they just like they stop at, at like after every swing and they like wave at you. Yeah, like come on guys, give us applause. I'm about to do another trick. I and and that's another thing. Like people that this is another thing that makes me mad at like concerts or shows or things or like especially like halftime shows uh, when they want to get you to like clap when they're trying to get the crowd to clap get the crowd into it uh-huh. and they're like we're not going to do it unless the crowd gets into it oh Screw yeah that's you. so far that's for I sure. paid for this <laughs> how about you just do it because I paid <laughs> and I'm, I'm a paying customer and I'm sitting here yeah exactly how about you just play the song that you're going to play because you're getting paid by my ticket right. sales, right? Not the not. I shouldn't have to beg you. It's like <laughs> it's like going to Walmart and buying, uh, taking your uh, item up to the uh, cash register. The cash register is like, do you really want this? <laughs> How about you dance for it? <laughs> dance for me right now, and I'll I'll sell it to you. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. I agree. Totally agree. So, anyway. Did I ever tell you about, uh, or you may have been there. Were you there when we saw Puddle of Mud way back in the day and he was just acting like a total jerk? Yes, yes, I was there. Like he stopped the show because he lost his bracelet or something? Yeah. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Boy, that guy's and made it, it like, these days, huh? What, did, what happened to him? Is he like, is he's he like dead? in jail or something, I think. I think he got on meth. Is he really? I don't know. Wow. Uh... Allegedly. Allegedly in jail or allegedly on meth? I don't know, but that's just how you cover yourself on a podcast, right? You just say allegedly right. and nobody can see you. Right. Uh, yeah. He was, uh, that was a disappointing show. It really, it really was. was. It really was a very disappointing show. But, uh, anyway, good to see he's landed on his feet. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you want to do feedback? Yeah, although uh, we're a little slim on feedback this time. That's okay. We got a lot of voicemails. Ooh, a lot of voicemails. I'm Better sure Nick for it. We heard Nick calling in earlier, right? So we know we at least got him. All right, here we go. Andrew Code says, "I love this game." It has a cool inventory system, uh, great graphics, controls, music, and awesome bosses. Come on, that rad T-Rex is awesome. I have clear, distinct memories playing this with my brother growing up. I popped it in. (laughs) I almost read that. I pooped it. (laughs) (laughs) I popped it in when he came over uh, a while ago, and we had zero memory of it. So maybe it wasn't as memorable for everyone. LOL. Uh, about the only complaint I have was some of the sound effects were not as good as I remember. Hope you guys like it. 
Uh, Aaron May says, this is a pretty fun game. Not sure why Karnoff just falls off ledges so easily, though. Oh, well, no biggie. I like that he shoots fireballs and can create ladders. The music fits. Kind of Russian sounding. Thanks for the great pod, two dudes. Thank you for listening, Aaron. Thank you. And he has a picture of Tom Arnold wearing a shirt that says, I love Karnoff. Huh. It's not real. Not photoshopped. It's not photoshopped? Not photoshopped. Wow. I don't know. It probably is. Photoshopped. I think it's photoshopped. Jesse Clevervidal says, is it Vidal? I don't know. I just call him uh, Clever the Great or the Great Dude. Right. That's true. Um... Awesome game. I believe I got mine from Neighbor Kid. What? Sunglasses no emoji. wonder I didn't get it from Neighbor Kid. Right. He already got it. Um, and Chris Frandezo says, I had never played this game before. And my co-host and I decided to remedy that this, remedy that this past summer on our podcast. Whoa, boy. I did not care for it in the least. I always wanted to play it because the cover looks so cool. And I like me some Data East games. But, man, this game did not do it for me at all. And Mike Hall rounds us out on Facebook with, I decided to take down the rejoicing Putin. Current world events made me feel like it might have been taken in the wrong. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Fair enough. Let's be clear. Yeah, let's be clear. Putin is only rejoicing over Karnoff. Right. He's we only endorse Karnoff. the the rejoicing Putin for Karnoff. How about that? That's right. Two dudes in an ass do not endorse Putin unless he's rejoicing over Karnoff. Right. Or any other rejoicing we've mentioned thus far on the show. Right. Exactly. All right. That's it. That's All it right. for Facebook. Uh, we got some other feedback. Let's go ahead and kick into voicemail since we've got so many. All right. We'll start with the one that just, just came in. Hot okay. off the presses. One of those infamous sound bites you'll ever have from Nick Stevens, but uh, this is probably one of my favorite games of all time. Like, probably top 10. Wow. Wow. He is just on top a roll. Tip. Top 10. He loves these games we've been talking about. Uh, I can't wait till Every we get to week. one that's like top 20 or top 30 instead of top 10. Right. I don't know. Right. I mean, we've just been. Every game we play, he's, he just loves it. You know what? He should probably call in and um, maybe mention. What games are falling out of his top ten? Right, because there's got to be bumping, some falling out. There's got to be fun bumping some, right? I mean, they can't. So. It can't just be filling up the top ten with top ten games and not some not falling out. So, right, right, all right. Here's another one. Hey, dudes, this is incredible. I can't believe I have a chance to win King's Knight for the NES. I've never even played that game. I'm so excited. This is just unbelievable. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, guess I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye, dudes. All right. Thank you, listener. Yeah, we did mention that if you call into the show, you get a chance to win King's Night. Unfortunately, listener, you didn't leave your name or anything. We don't even know who you are. We got your number, <laughs> yeah. I guess. But We can call you, I we guess. We can call you, I guess, yeah. Uh, but I tell you what, you're still entered. But uh, call in again or hit us up on Facebook or something to let us know who this was. All right? Thanks. Next. That's why we got so many voicemails. I forgot about that. Yeah. Two dudes in tangent. You guys love the Genesis Gym. Doing your top ten. You guys love your Genesis Gems during your top ten. I know who that was. Just delete that one. Okay. It's too late now. It's, all, it's, all, it's already like on the air. Right. No, no. I'm just joking. Was it you? Maybe. Dude, finally, you picked out a game that I actually know something about. Uh, you're playing Karnov next, which uh, I've tried numerous, numerous times to beat, and uh, I just I can never do it because I can never get past the, I think there's some kind of ice level or mountain level or something. I can never get past that one. I don't know why, but it's just, it gets progressively harder as it goes along and it just it just starts being really difficult uh from what i see it's not that long of a game so that's why it's kind of on the priority list you know beat another game for the uh 
Yeah, I was doing this thing for a while there, like 100 games in, uh, when I beat 100 games, basically, just so people could say that I was playing, like, uh, games or whatever. Uh, that's when I would be able to buy Flintstones and, like, Little Samson and, like, all the big shot titles. So, Cardinal was one of the games I attempted, and I couldn't beat it. I, I don't, I just, I just couldn't do it. So, uh, fun game, kind of a little weird, and, uh, the control maybe isn't the best at all times, but you get used to it. It's not so bad, and, uh, you know, it's a good enough game overall. It's a pretty cheap game, so hopefully it's not, like, Forty-seven thousand dollars now, like you know, all the other games that you guys end up reviewing that I bought for like three bucks back in the day. So, but anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that one and uh, uh, anxious to see what you think. So this has been Jay Z NES from YouTube signing out. Okay, dude, Jay Z, uh, I beat it, and I'm terrible at video games, so you need to get back at it. Yeah, uh, and try again because I think you can, I think you can do it. You surely you can do it. And I don't I'd, call him Shirley. No, I'm calling him Shirley until he beats this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I lost I lost my place, so this may be I may be repeating the call here. To do the tangent. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. The <laughs> worst one to repeat. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. The jail. Annex. Our records show you do not have an account or enough funds to complete this call. To pay for just this call using your credit or debit card, please press <laughs> 1. To decline this call, press 4. <laughs> if you would like to permanently block your number from receiving calls from this facility, press 6. If you do not want to connect this call but would like to fund an account to pay for future calls, please hang up and dial 800-844-6591. Okay. Right. Someone calling us from jail? Is that- What'd you say? I said, was that like from a prison or something? They're yes. like talking about loading somebody's account. <laughs> yes, it was from a prison. Is one of the dudes in jail? Yeah. <laughs> it's probably Aaron Hick. Yeah. Or you know who it probably is? Deservedly Fair so. Enough. It's probably dude Vanderhoff for switching sides and being a traitor. <laughs> right. He's in traitor Deservedly jail. So. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Here's probably one. right. Dudes, what's up? This is you, Tyler. Big fan of uh, King Punch 5, King Tyler. Just finished the Wampum episode. Wanted to let you guys know you did a good job. I had heard of the game you were playing before. I look forward to trying it out in the near future. One thing I was wondering about was if you will ever cover world-class track me. And I think it would be pretty funny if you guys either streamed on Twitch or on YouTube, you both competing using the power pad <laughs> and doing some of the reading stuff, because I actually picked that up a few years ago, and when I was younger and tried to play it, I actually did pretty well, and now that I do it that I'm an adult, it's kind of impossible, because... I just cannot get my feet to the pad step. So, would be the reason why you guys should invest in it. Uh, also, when you guys streamed on Twitch for Wampum, I actually messaged you on there, but it didn't look as though you guys were paying attention. So, I'll try to do that more in the future. But I'm on Twitch every now and then when I see you guys on there, I try to tune in. Lastly, the Retro Junk Box is on its way to the next lucky subscriber. So hopefully they get that. And, uh, I forgot to check the tracking. So whomever got it, if you wouldn't mind just shooting a message on Facebook to let us all know that you got it, that would be great. And so everyone knows it's still in circulation. Keep up the good work, dudes. Looking forward to hearing the next episode. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, yeah. Are we allowed to use our fists to play the track me game on the pad? Uh, I got a story I can tell on that episode if we ever get to it uh, about yeah. Crabman and I beating that game, but with our fists and co-op. But I'll get to that. Uh, when we get to that, when we get to that episode. Game. All right, this is the last yeah. call.
And that's it. <laughs> Sweet. All right, that that's a good last call. Uh, yeah. Also, really on Tyler's note, uh, I guess sorry we missed you on the Twitch thing. Uh, that is one of the reasons why we are putting the pause button on the Twitch because we were not very good at it. My computer was not very good at it, and we could not pay attention to it like we wanted to. So we're pausing that for now. So we may bring it back in the future. I don't know, but for right now, we're just going to focus on just recording the podcast for a little while. But we may, I don't know, we'll see what we'll see what happens. With, maybe by the time we get to World Track Me, we'll be jumping around on a pad on Twitch. We'll see. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun, though. That would be pretty fun. Uh, let's see. Honorary Dudes Group. Feedback? No. No? Maybe. I don't know. No. No. We got some on Twitter, though. Matt Raythel. Mm-hmm. Raythel. I forget how to say his name. Sorry, Matt. Uh, loved this game. Bought it last year harder than I remember. And then Ultra Lavo says, I guess I didn't look close enough to read the disclaimer that said the screenshots were from the arcade and the NES version may differ. It was still fun to play. I remember playing the arcade version of this first. I loved it. Then when I rented the NES version, I was amazed that the pictures on the back of the box looked so close to the arcade. To my disappointment, the real graphics were not nowhere near as good. Thank you, thank you. Yep, thanks. Uh, we need to have Matt on again, because I wonder if he's going to make another game, or if they're still working on Hive Jump. If they're still going crazy with Hive Jump, or if they're planning on doing another game. We yeah. need to get that scoop, you know? Yeah. Okay, uh, Google Plus, Ryan... Are you there, my friend? Yes. Missed this one, so I'm hoping I'm not too late. This looks like a game I would have loved as a kid. Beyond appearing to be a solid platformer, I can appreciate the various items that Karnov uses to get around. I think that's a neat idea, and I bet it works well within the game. Well, the items work well, as we've said. The selection right. of the items, not so much. Not so much. Yeah. Oh, good old Ryan. Good old Ryan. Oh, we got... Oh, whoa. Facebook page is going nuts. Well, at least a lot more nuts than usual. Oh, I missed that. St- Stacy Sears says, Finally, rented this game from a local mom and pop video store when I was a kid. A fireball shooting, dinosaur killing dude. My only complaint is that he could only shoot straight ahead. Mike Hall says, Never played it before, but I've heard good things. There's a copy down at the local game shop for cheap where I live. If the dudes give it a good review, I may need to pick it up. Uh, Jason Petrozzi says, Love this game. So effing weird. I bought it because of the cover. Do Monster Party next. <laughs> uh, Robert Ferguson uh, of Atari 2600 Podcast says, Paging Chris Rosado, uh, Randazzo, sorry, Chris Randazzo. And then Chris comes in and says, Ugh. There you go. There you go. I guess that says it all. That's right. Okay, I think that's it. That's all we got. I don't know. There may be more. That's, that's good all, feedback. That's good all we're feedback. going to do. I thought we were low, but uh, worked out. The voicemail has really pulled it in. You know? Oh, it did. And if that Especially guy, Nick. yeah, Nick, he always does. I guess he. Well, he's entered in the contest now. He may get a copy of King's Night. Yeah. Not the Genesis version. Because the Genesis wasn't cool enough to have a version of that game. Right, of course. All right, I guess that's uh, that's all we got for the show. Yeah? No more uh, tangents on uh, bag bombs? No. You, Circus you animals? Go, you go ahead and uh, you can go rub that on your cow, on your cow teat before you go to bed. Oh, it's my aunt's. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, we do have another tangent that I would like to get to on an episode. Mike Hall I'll post on Facebook asking for people to fill in the players in World War II with video game characters. <clears throat> and then he wrote a story, and I'd like to read it on the podcast at some point. Maybe one of the ones where we're going a little slow. 
but it's really sounds good. Like a wiener. It almost it almost sounds like a history teacher or something, which I think that may have been Mike's second calling or first calling. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Anyways, awesome. That's all I got. Oh, did you hear about the new organ? I'm sure you have. The new organ. Yeah, I read about it earlier today. The newfound organ could be the biggest in the body. Have you heard about What's this? That? No. It's some kind of like gelatin membrane that's like a protective layer. They don't know if they're nope. going to call it an organ yet or not. Anyways, look it up. We'll talk about it on another show. All right. I'll send it. I haven't to heard you. about that one. I'll send it to you. It's, it's interesting. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's close it out. All right. Well. Great pod. Just yawning. Just, you know, makes for great pod. Yeah. Uh, you can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, um, Google Plus, Brian Bauer. You can go to uh, our web pages at two dudes in an S.com, Nintendo's.com, or NESDudes.com. And you can use that phone number that Nick Stevens is so fond of. That's right. That number is uh seven seven five seven retro one. Or you can go to our website, nesdudes.com, and click on the little phone icon in the upper corner, and it'll say call or cancel, and you'll hit call, obviously. And right, it'll that, cancel it. And then it'll dial seven seven five seven seven three eighty seven sixty one. Any of those will call us. Uh, let's extend the contest for a little bit longer. Let's give them one more chance to call. So we'll still take... One more chance to call? Yeah, one more chance to call. We'll still take calls for the King's Night episode. All right. Yeah, the King's Night game, if you want to call. Sounds good. Is it good? He's good. Good. All right. All right. Uh, So shout out to the Retro Junkies. Uh, let's see, I'm supposed to talk about a show. Uh, I'll talk about the worst show on the Retro Junkies. Uh, Nick Stevens' show, since he keeps calling in. He does a really terrible show about the Je- Sega Genesis. It's called Genesis Germs. Actually, it's called Genesis yeah. Gems. Which, that, that doesn't even make sense. Germs makes more sense. Right, I don't even know what gems. Yeah. Anyways, so shout out to that show. Don't go listen to that. Uh, shout out to the Wee Dude, or the Wee Guy on YouTube for the music. Shout out to the Fox Dude for the logo. And here comes the sounds from the next game. Actually, one more thing. April's Patreon that we're doing is going to be with Stephen Michael. And it's going to be about the game Lizard, which is a new game that's been made for the NES. Uh, and we're going to talk about it, but you can, we will give the game away to one lucky Patreon donor. So if you want to get in on that, then you need to be a Patreon donor by the time that the episode airs, we'll say. So do it. So do it. Do it now. Do That's it. That's right. Because we're going to give a, we're going to give a copy of it away. I'll post about it on Facebook too, but anyway. All right. That's it. Here do comes it. The, here comes the music for the next game. Bye, bye.